Chip and I are here at our new house in Fresno. We wanted to use this opportunity to clue you in on how to start the design process, figure out how to design your own garden. We will take you through from beginning to end using my own perspective garden as a model. There's several steps to getting to a finished landscape design. This is going to be the very first step, or maybe step and a half. If you like this video, please like it. Continue to watch and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Let us know in the comments if you'd like Chip and I to show you how to get to the next steps and eventually to the completion of a landscape design. The first step is a site survey, which not only includes a survey, but what we want to get to is an, an exact document that gives us the site to scale so that we have all the dimensions. Be better not to use Google Earth to do that. One thing you want to avoid is make sure you understand what drawing a site to scale means. One time a friend of my wife's wanted me to help him and so I asked him if he could draw it to scale and then give it to me. He said yes. So then a week later he gives my wife a piece of paper and it's about this long and about this wide and he says uh, this is what John needs. I can tell you if you come up with something that's that size that it's not properly done. A drawing to scale is going to be at least a page and sometimes depending on the size of your site more sometimes 24 by 36 and you can pick a number of scales you can go one inch equals 10 one inch equals eight feet one inch equals four feet even one inch equals 20 feet if you have a pretty big site. The easiest way to do it is with graph paper that's already divided into little squares. It comes in different sizes. The lighter lines inside the big squares, they'll be 10. That means you're going to be 1 inch equals 10 feet. Or some have 8. That means you're going to be 1 inch equals 8 feet. And then you don't even have to be measuring it. You just count it. You could use a long tape measure. You know, you can get 100 foot tape measures. And you could just set that down and then start walking through it and making notations where different things are. Okay, here's the fence, here's where the house starts, here's where the front porch starts, that type of thing. Here's where the windows are and just leave that 100 foot tape on the ground. You could use a short tape measure. You just, that just takes more time and you have to keep marking it. Mostly contractors use a wheel, but it's not necessary. Most homeowners don't have a wheel. The site survey is going to begin the process of accurately depicting the entire site without walks. That comes in a little later, but we've already done it because we've already been through the design process. So a part of measuring the site and putting it on paper is identifying opportunities and constraints. In other words, constraints are problems on the site, so that might mean the house proximity to the street being a constraint. We want to mitigate that impact to the street. The security of the site, that's a constraint. You can see our neighbor's house here is kind of open to our view. That's a constraint. We want to figure out how to resolve that. We knew we're looking for an opportunity to put in a lap pool. So the constraint is you need to find a big open area in a site that isn't too big. Sometimes they're the same. We identify a spot here that is 75 feet long, and so that's an opportunity. Views, wind, sun, these are all parts of opportunities and constraints. We're building an arbor here that's connected to the family room. You know, this would not be a part of the site survey because we wouldn't know where this is yet. So this beginning phase is supposed to be conducted with an open mind where you get the site accurately depicted on paper to scale and then you make a program. The program includes everything you want your garden to include. Part of my program was a miniature onsen. I don't know if you know what an onsen is, but they're popular in Japan. So you're looking at places where that could occur. We might want to screen. We talked about screening the neighbors to one side. Maybe the same thing applies to the back as we look at. They already have a nice beginning screen here with these uh, bays. We might want to do a little more screening. Maybe as part of
of our program, we say that we want meeting areas or courtyard areas. So at this point, you can see we have it set up for a courtyard area here. But at the point we're talking about now, we wouldn't know where the courtyard areas are. We just know we want that. Maybe part of the program is we'd like courtyard areas with a variety of exposures. That way, at different times of the day, you have different sun exposures. On the side yard, there's a lot of constraints here. We got all this solar, so we don't want to block those. Right now, they're perfect southern exposure, so we'd use small stuff here if we're going to do planting. You see here, we already have the circulation, we already have the driveway, but in this stage that we're at, we wouldn't know where the driveway would be, but we would identify the garage, so that's gonna give you a hint, and then you would identify, obviously, the street and the size of everything. That would give you all the information you need to design something functional to how you wanna use it. We kind of have come up with a concept here that you could identify on your program where the front can function as part of the entire usable yard. You know how usually gardens are separated into a front and a back and only the back is useful for the more private activities of a family and the front is just for walking through to get to the front door. So what we would identify in the program is the ability to use the front and the back and have them connected in a way. Chip and everyone would have access to the front and the back at the same time. So everything inside this privacy wall can be used almost like a backyard. We wouldn't know the shape of it yet, but that would be part of the program. All of that goes into the first step where you're just identifying all the realities of the site and the specifics of the site in terms of size. Make sure your drawing is bigger than this. A lot of that then allows the design to resolve itself because many of the things are very obvious. For instance, where the driveway should be. Very obvious and you know the size of the garage. Once you know where the front door is on the house, which in this case is right here, then you know you need some kind of a circulation that gets you to the front door. You know it needs to be connected to parking. If you decide to build an arbor somewhere, you like the idea of extending the garden out from the house, almost like an outdoor room, then consider the best opportunities for, to do that where you have spaces in the house that are best expanded upon, like these double French doors. Obviously, that's going to be a prime spot. In terms of putting plants on the program, well, definitely you would put existing plants. That's part of the site analysis. If you're after a certain feeling, then you might put one or two trees and one or two major shrubs that you know you want to include because it's part of the essence of the design. In a very limited basis, address some planting, but for the most part, planting is a a step down the road. What you're trying to do here is allow yourself to go to the next step, which is creating the spaces of the garden. And that's pretty much separate from planting. The other thing you would do in this stage is you would analyze the architecture of the house or the building or you know whatever it is you're designing. For instance, this Maybach home is kind of regarded as a combination of Swiss Japanese. So you're kind of keeping that in mind. We're trying to come up with materials that blend in with the house and you would identify that as part of the program that you want this landscape design to fit in with the style of the architecture. So this is a new house, but all of these principles apply to an existing house, any type of garden design, the process is the same. When you're making your program, you're hopefully being creative and thinking about all the photos that you've seen that you like, or all of the videos that you've watched of ours that give you some good ideas. Lots of different places where you can get inspiration, but you're approaching this very conceptually. You're not saying, I have to have this exactly. If you want to get your inspiration from ones that Chip and I have done, we have put together a list for you below. You can watch these videos and hopefully they'll give you some excellent ideas that apply to your own use and taste. Did you say any, everything, Chip? Did you cover it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Chip and I got everything. We hope it was of some help. Remember, this is just the first step, so if you want to progress down the road and come up with a design that meets all of your needs, then uh, tune in to upcoming videos after this one. If you have comments, enter them in the section below. Thank you very much for watching.